There's scenes here at Perry Park. Chris Lynn has taken the wild thing and sent it. Oh, bang, 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 wow. Yes. Welcome one and all to the Beyond the Sidelines podcast. Again, we are in video. You can see our beautiful, I mean, questionable, beautiful faces here in full video form. With me, as always, is Phineas Morton and Angus Bryan. How are you doing, fellas? Yeah, good. Good. Not bad. I'm enjoying isolation, or not really isolation. I guess we've been a bit freer as of late, but mm. I'm still enjoying a bit of time to myself. Yeah. A bit of time to yourself. What are you doing with your time, mate? Nothing, really. Honestly, nothing. nothing. Um, watching a lot of TV and, you know, losing track of study and all, all that kind of stuff. So I've got a lot of work to do in the next sort of week. How Actually, the uh, fine uh, blonde man to my right. Oh, uh, me? Yeah. Jesus, I'm blushing, CJ. God, yeah, mate. Go, mate. Um, no, mate, I'm, I'm good. I can't complain after that. How could I? Um, but what are we binging on Netflix these days, gents? Uh, Cam, uh, si- Gusman, that's your name. Uh, you mentioned uh, that you're watching a lot of TV. You had a 50-50 there, mate. 50 yeah. there. You got it wrong. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm actually, no, I'm not really ashamed of this, but Campbell mentioned it last week. I believe it was last week, last week that he was watching The Office. So I thought I'd you know crack that open for what the second time in isolation so i've already watched it but i'll watch it again because it is Mate, a funny show i have noticed the increase in references you're making to it it's yeah, good and i just say yeah. you are making more references it, it's it's I amazing because whenever we've got we're watching a new show like we all sort of watch the same we sort all watch of it shows, at the same time yeah. and we all whenever one's you know popular with us we're always making quotes about it so Actually, right no, now it's right. the office it used to be plebs it used to be in between us mm. yeah so we're, we're changing it week by week well let's tell the right. faithful about that guys because back when we used to be able to spend time with each other mm. that felt like an eternity ago of course uh we used to record the podcast or at least some of it then we'd go out to the main building part at the in the journalism building at uq plug one of our computers into the hdmi and watch like gusman said plebs or the in-betweeners and on occasion more often than we'd like to admit uh there is a dominoes just down the road and yeah. uh, for a five dollar pickup you're uh, absolutely kidding yourself if you're not going to go get that so yeah, uh, yeah. it was that got it, us through it got yeah, us through it's the dominoes and then you come back to the studios and i reckon this is this is the only place where they've got a dollar 70 or dollar 60 cans of coke yeah, yeah. Right. vending machines like that's unheard of nowadays. Like inflation, like two dollars, it is just hasn't pretty, affected standard, UQ. Yeah. <laughs> See, no, the, uh, no, no, it's that's absolutely. where your funds are going, mate. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, speaking of keeping entertained, we've got to touch on it because this week was a very good week for myself. A very good week. Oh, it's a good uh, week for me. Actually. Not so much. Not so much for Campbell. Oh, it's a good week for me. He's a loser, and I was victorious. Uh, oh. Well, I mean, who wins in the Champions League? You know, aggregates just a second. And just stuff just like a that. second. How does that work? Just a second. I ventured into the unknown. I was brave, I was courageous, and I came out a man and a champion. Mm. And I'm better for it, Gusman. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, you sent a message to the group chat the other day. Sure did. And it was, it was something along the lines, I'm better at AFL evolution than Campbell. <laughs> Which <laughs> is not true. I think that's true. pretty much it. You're like, I defeated Campbell, I'm the champion. You know, your usual Finn jargon sort of yeah. talk. Um, I didn't realize, so I congratulated you, of course, and then I didn't realize it was out so. three and you'd only won one. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I didn't get the whole story there. Out so, of board, no, 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 no. But I won the last one. It was very yeah. much, oh, I said before, I was like, hey, this is it. This is the only one that matters. <laughs> you literally Winner won the dead on. rubber. No, no he, I won the dead rubber. He has won the battle, but I will <laughs> I win. will win the the, the rest battle. of the battle. <laughs> <laughs> See, um, the office references. Fantastic. Yeah. No, because... No, so, South Africa versus New Zealand. Let's get yeah, into that one. That was our first game. So, this is South my... South Africa fir- whooped New Zealand. New we Zealand know, just... They are very good at AFL. All they can do up front. We know about, you know, Brad Smith and, you know, the greats of New Zealand <laughs> AFL. But... Um, Round two. What was round two? Oh. Uh, no, actually, I just want to butt in, mate. Before yep. we move on from New Zealand South Africa, I do just want to make a quick excuse and say... It was my first attempt. Yep. I'll put my Fair hand enough. up. We were playing yeah. in Shanghai. I was windy. about to say that. Mate, how dare you butt in? I was about to <laughs> so say thank bad. you to the Shanghai people for welcome, welcoming us into their city. The uh, truly great hosts. And uh, hopefully they get an AFL Evolution team in the near future. Yeah, let's hope so. But I think round <laughs> two was <laughs> Western Bulldogs versus... Um, they actually... Well, I know China has a team, but... Um, mm. It was Western Bulldogs, which you played as, I think, right? No, no. That was you versus your sister. 
Oh, that's right. And well, who, who did we you, play as? Well, you walloped Charlotte. What was yeah, it, 78 nil? Yeah, let's so, get into that. That's Charlotte? So, that's so that's horrible. Unfair. So just mean. Dump your sister in a game of AFL so, Evolution. Hey, she doesn't learn. She doesn't get any better. So basically, from Charlotte, no doubt you're listening at this point. Uh, go, go train. Go practice. Go train. Yeah. Uh, no, our, our second meeting, uh, the second of our trilogy, was um, the Bulldogs versus the Giants. That's right. So our two teams live from Marvel Stadium. Uh, just a marvellous stadium. Uh, I've got to say, uh, that's funny. that game, that funny, game would you. get you fired up. You would not want to lose that no, one. Because you're actually, playing as your favourite team, so. Toby it was actually Green pretty was cool. Too, so. it was, yeah, Toby Green. Uh, it was actually pretty cool because um, like when the Bulldogs kick a goal, because they were the home team, which again is a factor, mm-hmm. um, is a factor, the faithful, the doggies faithful started chanting, you know, Bulldogs, Bulldogs. And it's pretty cool yeah. uh, to have that as a and function. Then, but, uh, and then when GWS kicked a goal, it was silence. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty. Sta- no that's pretty standard. Standard. It's, no, it's nothing. <laughs> that's nothing new. But then uh, for the uh, for the trilogy to complete the saga, mm. that was Campbell versus Finn, All Stars versus Vic. This mm. was as big as it gets. The best of the best against Victoria, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I came out on top. I I'm not going to lie. I went behind early. Yeah. yeah quick, two quick goals, and I thought, okay, here we go. I thought, here we go uh, again. Here we go this again. This is Shanghai all over again. Ah, uh, flashbacks. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, somehow I fluked like four or five goals, which yeah. let's face, doesn't sound like a fluke. And you know what, Gusman? It probably wasn't, mate. I'm, uh, I'm pretty damn good. And uh, no, basically, I was up by two goals. No, I was up by 11, 10 points yeah. with two minutes of game time to go. And then Campbell kicks two goals in about 20 seconds. Yeah, it was great. It was no, a great actually, passage of play. No, you kicked two goals and there was 20 seconds left. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, ah, damn it. This isn't happening. And, and I remember like freezing, going, okay. I was off. I was so keen. I was like, yeah. I was so excited. I was like, yeah. what a comeback. You, you can't write this stuff. You can't script it any better, but then you can. Well, you yeah. could because good old uh, Brady Grundy won the, uh, won the ruck, kicked it forward. And it bounced, and I was like, "Damn it, we needed a mark there." But then someone, probably Toby Green, uh, caught the ball, snapped it, and as it, as the ball was flying through the air, Gusman goes between the middle sticks, and the siren. Oh, no, the siren goes before that. Did the it? siren goes it as you kick. It's it mid air. The siren oh. goes. It bounces. No, it didn't bounce. Through. No, I'm pretty sure it did. I'm uh, pretty sure it did. Not, oh, I'm pretty sure it did because we were like, "Oh, it didn't count." No, it was um, and it was quite through the uprights. So then, of course, the All Stars, my team, won by four points. But it was, I oh, know, it was quite funny. It really was. Mm. I don't think we did it justice, but it was really one of those moments where I wish we got that on film because oh. it was actually very, very fun to play. So, yeah, quick plug well, for AFL Evolution. Uh, get amongst it. Yeah, you can't quite call yourself the champ yet. You haven't played me. All right, don't, don't I've need never to played guess. AFL yeah, Evolution either. So I, I really, I'm probably not going to be that bigger competition but we definitely need to get a round of robin sort of tournament mm. going here to see who really is the best uh, I, really like to, look, I, think we, I think we all know who the best is though so yeah. it's kind of just seems is there any ta- point really? just seems a tad unnecessary when we yeah, can you guys play me in rugby showers. league three oh, I'm gonna, and i'll wipe the floor with you mate, i'm good at rugby league games rugby challenge Rugby on. challenge, whatever whatever one we want to play. Mate, if I versed you at rugby challenge, we'd just call it a rugby because it wouldn't be a challenge. See, there's a bit no. of a burn there. There's a bit, bit of a burn. burn. Not a very Take good me one. On. Okay. Football okay. manager. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take me that'd on. Cr- that'd be crazy fun. Football you manager. You would cream me in, <laughs> in football manager. <laughs> football manager. Like, uh, people just don't understand it. If you don't play football manager, you won't understand just how addictive it is and why it is. I, was, the only- I went through a rough patch. You Last did. Semester. You did. But it's the only um, it's the only video game in the world where you know you'll be playing in the fourth di- fourth division of the Belarus Football League or whatever, mm-hmm. and you'll be trying to get promoted, and you're still going. This is really fun, and it's three a.m. Yeah. There's nothing I'd rather be doing. Yeah. Except so what, maybe. So, so does Football Manager have it over FIFA? You reckon FIFA yeah. career mode? Yeah, that's it. Ooh. I'd say so. Wow. Personally, big shout. I'm not much of a gamer though. It's different. No. Yeah. Anyway, uh, something I'd rather be doing, though, is interviewing and talking to people who are in these games because they've earned that because of their phys- physical prowess. Now, just a quick side story before, go- before CJ introduces us into the interview, but Campbell and I were driving about a month ago and we saw good old Payne uh, just mm. walking down the street. Uh, I was going to say good day, but 
uh, he got cold feet. So, mm. yeah. Um, he's a really big dude, though. Eh? He's a he big, dig, big dude. A if, unit. If well, you he, have a, he's, only, he's only 19 or 20. He's 20. Sure. 20. He's 20. Now, yeah. He's but younger than man. you, Gus. God, yeah. what are they he's, putting in the water these days? Uh, uh, ginormous. You're basically the same age, but okay. No, no, um, it's scary. He's, he's massive, and I'm like. I think that's more a reflection on us. And our, yeah. our gym no, habits we're, we're like normal, we're normal. We're normal sort of people. He's I'm a uh, normal he's sort of guy. Um, like he's, no, he's a big yeah. bloke. He is, yeah. and like you only have to look up his highlight reel to really see just how much of a pain in the heart he is for opposition players. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> oh my and god! It's even worse than I thought That's it would great. be. That's <laughs> great. Oh you. my god! Oh, Dude, thank, you. Great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That anyway, quality. anyway, um, I'm going to keep laughing internally, but CJ, take it away. <laughs> Yeah, we've got Payne Hass on this week. Uh, Brisbane Broncos prop, I believe. He's a prop, right? Yeah, yeah he's a yeah, prop. prop uh, superstar. Uh, also plays for New South Wales Blues. So uh, yeah, he got his origin yeah. debut last year. Second most inexperienced player. But uh, let's let him do the talking, hey, boys? So we are joined by Payne Hass today. Broncos prop, New South Wales superstar. Thank you very much for joining us today, Payne. How you doing? Yeah, good, bro. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So... We mentioned it before we started recording, but coronavirus, we're in the middle of it. How are you handling it, mate? Uh, it's a bit different, you know. Obviously, I'm used to, like, training with all the boys and all that every week, but, you know, I think it's pretty good, you know. I'm spending time with family and you know, just working on my weaknesses, so it's all right. Yeah, Eddie, no doubt. Are you in contact with the boys back at the Broncos at all at the moment? Because we spoke to Harry Wilson as well, actually, from the Queensland Reds, and he was telling us about how they're doing yoga sessions over Zoom and that type of thing at the moment. Anything like that with the Broncos? I don't think yoga sessions, but you know, we stay in contact on WhatsApp and stuff. So yeah. Everyone stays in contact, so it's pretty good, bro. Yeah, yeah man. And so uh, what's the main thing that you're doing to keep fit, I guess? Um, so I live on a pretty big property with my parents. And my yeah, family. Right. I just do laps of that and train pretty hard every, every day. So <sighs> yeah. Life of an athlete, that's something we'll never get to experience, unfortunately. But, uh, <laughs> man, it's... um. The NRL season, I guess that's up in the air at the moment. Let's chat, chat a little bit about that. May 28th. What do you reckon? Do you think it's going to come back or? Well, we're hoping it is, you know, obviously we all wanted to start, but, you know, obviously you got to think about health before wealth. So um, we just got to get that right. And hopefully if all goes well, we, we can come back May 28th. And the, one of the possibilities that are being discussed as well, Anastasia, Anastasia Palaszczuk, the Premier in Queensland, has obviously said that if the Broncos, Cowboys and Titans want to keep playing and the, the NRL wants to well, resume the season, uh, the Queensland teams will have to relocate to Sydney. Do you think, is that something you and the boys would be comfortable with or how are you feeling about it all? Um, obviously, um, it's our job, you know, playing rugby league is our job, so... At the end of the day, if we have to go down to Sydney just to get this comp running, I'm yeah. pretty sure most of us will um, put our hand up to do it. But obviously, it'd be pretty tough for most most teams, um, especially outside of Sydney, just away from families. Yeah, you know, just other stuff. So, yeah. Oh, and then, um, I mean, we only saw a little bit of the Broncos at the start of this year, but you guys won both your games. So, w- what do you think uh, you've done differently this year compared to maybe what was a disappointing 2019? Um, I think I think not just relying on just certain players. I think, as you can see, the first two games we played as a team, and, um, our forward pack played together, mm. and just our halves got it right. So um, hopefully, when we come back, we can keep that rolling. So, yeah. well, what do you think about the new guys? Guys like Patrick Carrigan, Brody Croft. How do you think they've fit into the Broncos squad? What the two captains? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, both young, but um, uh, they're they're crazy. Um, they're freaks of players and. You know, they're good leaders. They might be young, but um, if you stay in the day with us, you know how much of leaders they are. You know, um, talk real well, and you know, they just um, guide us real. So that's good. Now yeah, I got to ask sure. this as well. You're a Kiba Park boy, aren't you? Yeah. So you um you you played with uh, David Fafita. Yep. Well, Kiba yeah. Park. So yep. how how good is it to come through the system with him playing uh schoolboy rugby uh, rugby league to be able to play with him again at the Broncos? Yeah, no, it's um, cool. You know, Davey's um, one of my best mates. So, um, you know, just to be able to lift this dream or we've both dreamed about is um, pretty cool, you know. And um, he's doing big things and, you know, just um, always come to describe how proud I am of him. And, you know, it's pretty cool that we're playing at the same club as well. So. Also, how do you not win that competition, that uh, schoolboy championship? How do you guys not win it with that side? I, don't know. I have no idea. Like, 
<laughs> Jeez, you bring up bad memories, Gus. Yeah, yeah Gus, oh, you're the bad news here, mate. <laughs> uh, look, I, I, was, I was just so surprised. They, they came second. They went to the, the Nationals, didn't you? So yeah. you did pretty well. But, I mean, that, that team, that Cabra Park team was unreal. Yeah, we had a pretty stacked team. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Um, let's talk a little bit about last season because we didn't really get a, as much of a season as we would have liked so far, at least. Yeah. Uh, but last season... It was, you guys were 10 and 10, I believe. But I mean, I guess the main talking point of last season was the end of the season. Um, mm. That finals game in Parramatta. Yeah. How did you view the whole situation that was going on? Obviously, there was a lot of media tension about it and we don't need to talk about all of it. But yeah. how did you kind of view that whole situation? Um, obviously, like, we, we did well to get to the finals. You know, um, some people read us off at the middle of the year, make the finals, but... Obviously, if you're playing a finals game, you don't want to go out that way or even play that way. Um, we didn't expect that. You know, we prepped well all that week and, um, yeah, just didn't go our way that day. But after, after the media and all that, after that game was pretty crazy as well. So mm. um, I think we learned as a young group that we can't do that again. And um, I think we've learned our lesson. So, yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, what kind of things do you reckon you learned from last season? Because last season was really your first kind of season of full footy. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you made some appearances. Uh, you made your debut against the Rabbits in 2018, but that was your kind of first season, kind of your breakout season. You know, um, your first season of full footy. What did you learn from that? Um, uh, well, man, I've learned lots of things. You know, I went through a lot at the start of that year. Um, and I got suspended, as you guys know, and I think. Just had to find myself, and you know, just during that year, you know, I learned some wisdom of people older than me, and you know, I think they've just molded me into who I am now. So, um, I think just the day to day how to handle being a professional athlete, you know, especially with all the fame that comes with it, I'm um, just trying to how to handle that and all that. So, I think kind of that kind of aspect I learned a lot. So. Yeah, sweet as, mate. And let's go back to the start of your career. Uh, before signing for the Broncos, you had 10 was it contract offers from 10 different clubs. So why did you land on Brisbane? Um, that was funny. Um, you know, I was going to sign with Melbourne. Really? Um, wow. Oh, wow. I had the piece of paper there. and um, I was pretty keen to go to Melbourne. And then uh, Wayne Bennett called me last minute and just persuaded me to go to Bronco. So he um, told me I had to earn my stripes and that's what I liked. So and then I've gone to Brisbane, so. And what's, what's Wayne like as a coach, mate? He's pretty traditional, I guess, from the outside looking in, but is he, yeah, what's he like as a coach? No, he's good. Um, you know, he's like a, you could say like a father figure to most people. Oh. So, um, no, he's good. He's a good person. You know, he looks after everyone. Um, I think that's what makes him so special. He's just his man management, looks after his players and, you know, um, he always wants the best for him. So I think that's what makes him pretty special. So. <laughs> Do you think that there's much difference between him and now Anthony Seibold? Mm. Well, I think they're different people. Um, I love Seibold as a coach as well. Um, you know, he's real cool. You know, he teaches me a lot. I've learned a lot under Seibold, and they're just two different people. We can't really compare them. Um, Seibold is at the start of his coaching career, and Wayne's near the end, so can't really compare that at the moment. So, um, no, Seibold has done a wonderful job with us. Um, you know, I can't thank him enough for what he's done for our team and just for me as well. So, yeah. And again, other than the 10 contract offers, you also had uh, offers from American colleges to play American football. Mate, were you tempted at all to go over to the US of A and take up the uh, gridiron? Uh, well, I thought it was cool, but, you know, if you know me, I'm a mama's boy, so <laughs> <laughs> I miss my mum and my family too much. So yeah. no, I didn't think I ever considered it. So, yeah. Oh, sweet as. And uh, Origin. Uh, that's that's something that's pretty cool, I guess. Again, something we'll never get to uh, reach. But uh, hey, mate, what was that like? Yet, mate. Yeah, I mean, again, we're, I mean, yeah, there's a will, there's a way. But mate, what was it like running out there and uh, making your debut and yeah, just donning the uh, the blue? No, it was um, it was pretty surreal. You know, words can't really describe playing Origin. Um, you remember as a kid, you used to watch it on the screen, and you remember the new stuff. I was always losing, so you always wanted mm. to be, and um. Just running out with some heroes like Lloyd Cordner or Tosa Frizzell and all that it was um, pretty crazy. You know, I couldn't stop pinching myself for weeks. So, yeah, um, well, was it a? Oh, sorry, continue. No, go, bro. So, uh, <laughs> was, was it was it a bit surreal? I guess for you uh, running out to on to play uh, onto Suncorp to play against the Maroons. 
Was yeah. that a, was it a bit weird there? Yeah, I was getting booed at some call which I really <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but um no, it was it was a crazy experience, you know, and um you know, I loved every minute of it and um you know, if I get the chance again to put on a blue jersey I'll take away both hands. So yeah, well, what does the Origin camp, how does that differ from, you know, being with the Broncos and being at a club side? How does that kind of, what's the environment like and how does it differ, I guess? Um, well, to be honest with me, I'm a shy person, so um, it's pretty hard for me to meet new people, you know, and um, that's just me being real, you know, and it's a bit different because I'm with Bronx boys, I'm used to being myself around them, and when you go meet new people, it's like a first day of school, so um, <laughs> it's pretty crazy, you know, and you get to meet guys like Boyd Corner and just like you know, be frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was pretty crazy. So yeah. But mate, one of the benefits of playing Origin, I don't know where I saw this. Uh, I think it was on like the Footy Show last year or something. But uh, all the free merch you guys get, it's crazy, isn't it? Don't you guys get like you just get like a bunch of stuff? Tell us about yeah, that. You get heaps of gear, so I was pretty happy. I love heaps of gear. So. <laughs> love Man, quite, so. Free. So, that's the best word in the dictionary, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> free. Well, I mean, you were the uh, you were the second most inexperienced player to ever represent the Blues. Was it, I guess, daunting at it at all for you being so young, playing in? I mean, the pretty much one of the best sides in the NRL or the rugby league competition. Yeah, um, yeah I was I was a bit scared because it was only my tenth game of NRL and so yes. I caught up Origin, so I was. I was a bit scared that whole week. I was like, wow, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm like, man, these guys have been playing for like 10 to 5 years and I'm in 10 games deep and I'm like, wow. I'm getting the <laughs> yeah. lines down here. So I'm like, but no, it was all experience and I learned a lot from it. And um, no, it just made me a better player coming from that. And how did you sleep the night before? Do you remember that much? Uh, you know, was it a nervous night? Yeah, I was nervous as hell. I'm usually not that nervous, but yeah. I'm mean, Nervous for a while, so it was pretty crazy. So, no, I enjoyed the experience, and it was like a roller coaster. So, yeah. I enjoyed. It. And how motivated are you to, I guess, get back to that position? Hopefully this year, but more, most likely next year. Yeah, um, obviously I'm heaps motivated. You know, I train hard, and you know that's one of my goals to uh, play Origin and stay consistent and try and stay in that team for as long as I'm here. So, um, yeah, you know, that's a big goal for you. Well, I mean, you mentioned uh, guys like Boyd Corner in that Blues side. Uh, what did they guess? Uh, I guess what did they teach you uh, that you're able to apply uh, at the Broncos in the Broncos forward pack? I guess. Um, I think just trying to be a leader, you know, lead by example. Um, you know, you can talk all you want, but your actions is going to do the job. So um, if you can lead by actions and show the boys what what can be done, it's um, I think that's what I took out of them. So, well, is that maybe a dream of yours to captain the Broncos? Oh, um, he's yeah. Gusman. Hard hitting questions here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, everyone wants to captain the side like the Broncos. Um, but you know, we got some crazy leaders at our club, so I'm just there to do my job. And if that time comes, it comes. But you know, I'm just happy where I'm at. So. Yeah, no doubt. What did you make of the appointment? It was kind of it was a little bit of a shock appointment um, after Alex Glenn went down. Of, Paddy Carrigan, you mentioned that he's a great leader and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it shocked a lot of people. Um, yeah. But Paddy Carrigan, what would you make of that? No, you know, everyone outside of the club would have been shocked, but all of us boys knew how much of a leader he is. And, you know, um, I was happy for us, for him to lead us out in to round one and two and him and Crofty. So, um, you know, Paddy's like one of my good mates as well. And I know what he brings to the table. So, um, you know, just him being now captain, um, I will full um full backing of that so yeah and why what makes him i guess such a good leader bane is it how he talks or does he just lead by you know through his actions or again yeah, is I he think a, i think it's a bit of both you know um, he talks well and mm. you know um he leads by his actions but with patty as well you see what you see is what you get you know um, you know he's he's never changing for anyone he's just himself so i think that's what makes him a special person as well again it's really exciting times for you guys at the broncos your forward pack in particular it's bloody young, but that's that's awesome for the future, eh, man? Yeah, no, it's crazy. Um, you know, you see all the boys like Tom Fleglo, who's a freak, and Paddy, and then Davey, and then the list goes on. Ethan Bullymore made his debut. Mm. We've got even more younger blokes coming through, so um, it's pretty crazy. And when you're at training, you just sit back, and you just like, find all some freaks in the team, man. <laughs> pretty crazy, so no, I can't wait. Um, it's a pretty special future, so can't wait. Now, you're also 
picked to play internationals for Australia for the Kangaroos. How amazing of an experience was that to come up against sides like New Zealand and Tonga as well? Yeah, no, that was um, the Aussie was probably one of my favourite experiences of all. Um, you know, if playing for your country is a real special, and I think people kind of forget how special that is to play for your country. And, um, I think that lost its way in the last couple of years, but I Mao's mean, done a terrific job just trying to bring back, trying to make sure that international foot is the pinnacle of rugby league instead of origin, which is going to be pretty hard, but still, if playing for your country is pretty, pretty special to me. So, um, versus Tonga in New Zealand was crazy, especially Tonga game. Even though we lost, that was one of the best atmosphere, atmospheres I've seen. So, that uh, was a crazy experience. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you actually which you might prefer, whether you prefer playing origin or test matches. Is there a preference at all for you? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'll, they're both pretty special. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I really mind. Yes. I don't really well, mind which representative team I play. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no. Only I could play in one. Yeah, exactly. But, just one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, more on your sort of international debut. I believe it was against New, uh, New Zealand. Uh, yep. What was it like pre-game, I guess? Uh, yeah, pre-game. What, what was going through your head, I guess, um, before uh, that game? Oh, I was actually excited to face the Haka because I, yeah, I, yeah. I always used to watch him go at us. So I was actually excited. You know, I stood in the middle of Dave Clemmer and that was pretty cool, you know, I got to face the Haka and then, you know, just versus New Zealand, like Jam, we were and all that. So um, it's a pretty crazy childhood dream. So um, no, it was a fun experience and we got the win, so it was pretty cool. Well, is, I guess, is there a player that you go on, like the opposition, you see the opposition, is there a player you sort of pick out you go oh, okay there's jared he seems to be the leader of their pack i'm going to target him is that sort of how you think uh, no i think just the two guys who have eight or ten that's who i'm competing with so uh, yeah. if i can get better of them i think our team will go on the win so yeah and uh how does the haka compare to the sippy tower of uh tonga in terms of which one's more intimidating mate because uh is there one one it's a bit more scary yeah. <laughs> you know, fans in he's just like fire this is crazy so uh, much respect to Tommy, you know, um, mm. they're, they're, going, they're doing a hell of a job and I'm um, very proud of them. They're Pacific Island Nation and on Pacific Island as well, so it's pretty cool to see um, our people make a rise. So. Yeah. And yeah, we won't touch on that too much, but I will say they did, of course, get the victory over you guys on that day. But how big for rugby league? do you think was that victory um, in terms of the growth of the sport? Because we've seen Tonga over the last few years, man. It's been absolutely insane how they yeah. have just, you know, really a breath of fresh air into, into yeah. the rugby league. But how big do you think that win was for them? It's massive for them. Um, you know, um, you see how much Tongan plays is going over to them now instead of playing for New Zealand or Australia, mm. which is pretty massive. Uh, you know, and hopefully the Pacific Island nations have a look at that and they get inspiration from that and, they had gone down over us as well, which will be pretty cool to see. Mm. Yeah, so the NRL is set May 28th as their date at the moment. Um, yeah. How, and you may not be in the right position to answer this one, but how likely do you think it is that you guys will get back by that point? Um, to be honest, bro, um, I reckon it just depends on how everyone goes. Um, you know, with all the stuff, we're like staying in your house and all that, trying to stay away and all that social distancing. I think if we do that right, we should be back May 28th, but yeah. obviously um, not everything's going to go to plan. So we're hoping for May 28th, but we'll just see what happens. That's yeah. such a fluid situation, mate. No one knows what's going on, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, again, people would love to see rugby league back on the TV screens, but health and safety is uh, very, very important right now. Yeah, no, it is. Um, that's what we talk about. Um, you know, when, when does it come to your health before wealth? So, um, yeah. you know, we're just... Um, you know, make sure everyone's safe and healthy. And even our players, you know, um, us players, we need to be um, safe. You know, we've got families to go back to and we don't want to disrupt them and put their health in danger as well. So, yeah, exactly. yeah, no doubt. Everyone needs to stay safe. Well, anyway, thank you very much, Payne, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, and we wish you all the best when the season comes back. Oh, yeah. Thanks, bro. Thanks for having me, guys. And thank you very much to Payne House for joining us this week. We really, really appreciate it. One of the superstars of the NRL and mm. definitely an even bigger superstar of the future. Um, I think we can all agree on that. Uh, but boys, what did you make of the interview? Well, I'm actually quite amazed, well, firstly, how good a bloke he is. And secondly, how he's been able to achieve all this stuff at such a young age. Yeah, it kind really of puts I mean, it in perspective. Yeah, where yeah we exactly. Are. He's 20 years old. 
and he's already played for New South Wales. He's already got a massive contract with the Broncos. Uh, he's pretty much the I'd I'd go to as far to say as he's the Broncos' best player. I don't think anyone would really disagree with that. Maybe David Fafita is probably Fafita coming up, the, but I, yeah. I still think Payne Haas is integral to their forward pack. And I think he's got a really, really big future ahead of him. So it's no good to see, and it was a great chat with him. I guess the future of the Broncos as well, gents. You mentioned David Fafita, bloke he played with a bit during high school. Mm. Uh, future's bright for the Broncos. Yeah. Uh, it's it, a young forward pack. Yeah. Isn't yeah, it so, crazy that they were able to play together through high school? And now together with the Broncos, pretty awesome. Just pretty a Cinder- amazing. Just a real Cinderella story, hey? Oh no, R- rugby doubt, league, no the gift that keeps on giving. But speaking of <laughs> gifts, um, it's been in the headlines a bit over the last week. The only sport that really has been um, because of their announced May twenty eighth return, May twenty eighth return date. But uh, Gusman, a bit of controversy during the week regarding TV rights and who's going to be broadcasting the greatest game on earth, as they call it. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It seems like things are changing by the hour. So by the time we probably release this, maybe Channel Seven might have the rugby league rights for oh, the next five ten years. Uh, like at the moment, we just don't know what's going on. Um, no. The NRL set that date of May twenty eighth, and it's growing ever likely that probably won't happen, mm. just because it's such a short time frame and the amount of things they have to sort out. Right, they've got to sort out. Um, where they're going to actually base the competition, what the structure of the competition is going to be, um, or even things down to like how players are going to recover and where, like where players mm-hmm. are going to stay and how then players will stay safe from the coronavirus. Like they haven't even mm. figured that stuff out yet. Oh, so well, the competition, I guarantee you, it will not come back on May 28th. Unless there is a virus found like that, like tomorrow, they, they, will, they will not come back. Yeah. No, I think, Gusman, we were speaking about it off air, but it really is the, the gift that keeps on giving. And I think for them to even suggest that it's going to return so quickly seems a bit naive. And man, I'm having flashbacks to last week because we had this exact same conversation. Yeah, exactly. But basically, um, I think they've basically just announced the date because no one has. And they're no, going, I'll- hey, no, they're going, best case scenario, we're back on the field on May 28th, you beauty. Worst case scenario, we're the only sport people are talking about for a month. And it's out of our hands. It's That's not, what I mean. It's not so, something we've done wrong, per se. No, no. Yeah. Look, um, I'm actually, I, I don't mind it too much. I, I said this so much last week. It'll, but it's just something that the, the fans get to see. They go, okay, the NRL's doing something. And honestly, the NRL, they don't give a rat's about anything other than money right now. No. All they care about yeah. is making sure that they sort out a broadcast deal with Channel 9 and Fox. Uh, or Fox 7. Cell. Let's talk about or, that. Yeah, but it's likely Channel 9 and Fox Cell. They're trying to pretty much, they're, they're, they're doing anything they can to ensure that those bro- broadcasting deals, you know, remain. Um, so, you know, at this stage, it's... <sighs> It's so up in the air. It's all up in the air. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know. Let's not just repeat last week's though because I think we could go down that tangent unless we, yeah. if we aren't careful. But something which we didn't discuss last week because it's come up during the week is Nick Politis, the uh, Sydney Roosters mastermind behind the salary cap sombrero, of course. Uh, he wants the points deducted from the earlier season games, the two rounds, I believe it was, that were played. Now, the Roosters, they were 2-0. and oh. So, of course, the benefit of having teams who went to... Uh, sorry, they were 0-2. So oh yeah. They were 0-2. Oh so, the benefit of them is they're then equal with teams who went 2-0. Oh. But, Gusman, we were having a bit of a texting rant. Texting Biff. Mm, you go yeah. that far uh, about this because you were kind of understanding of why Pilatus mm. want the Sydney Roosters to be on a level playing field yeah. should the season return. But it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And, I mean, I am a Roosters fan, so obviously there's going to be a, an element uh, of bias there. Very biased where, biased I can see where he's point. coming from, and I think the backlash he's gotten for it has just been ridiculous. I mean, people love to hate Nick Politis, and he, they, people love to hate the Sydney Roosters because of their success. So, well, I mean, obviously when he says something like this, which is pretty controversial, yeah. he's going to get a lot of backlash for it. Um, but honestly, I, I don't think it's the worst idea, but I can... I can understand. I mean, Mm. it's not going to happen, but I can understand where he's coming from when he says this sort of stuff. Because (laughs) when you when when you cut this season down to fifteen games or however many games it's going to be, those 
two first premiership games are going to be worth so much more than they were at the start of the season. But they're still it, games, mate. I don't understand. Yeah. Like, I, I understand yeah. that element somewhat, but they're still games. And it, 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 day, it changes. No, everyone's cut down to the same level. Yeah, I know, but it changes the complete uh, the complexion of the season. A lot of teams, um, for example, the Roosters, they take time to build into their season. So a twenty five round competition allows a lot of teams See, to build into a, into the competition and to establish themselves and gives them more of an opportunity to okay. make the finals. Well, as so well. so who's the best? So if they're going to build, they're going to build slowly over a fifteen game season either. So it's it's like they're probably going to lose if that's your logic, then they're probably going to lose the first two games anyway, right? I think I think for the current Don't sporting, start slow, just hit it off the bat. Just oh, Don't says use the, it as an excuse. Says the doggies fan. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. we're not talking about that, all right? Um, no, I just think. I just, I just don't understand that. I think that's a bit of BS in a way, Gus, when I say yeah. that kind-heartedly. But in the current sporting landscape, with how fluid everything is, and even the fact that all these athletes are professional, you can't blame the season being shortened on a team not winning the minor premiership or yeah, not no. sneaking into finals. No, but I, yeah. Maybe what they should do that would kind of compensate for the season reduction and teams who had harder games versus easier games is every team plays each other once. Now, this yeah. is, before the AFL suspended their season, this was the big, I guess, talking point from Victoria and down south that if the season does return, each team plays each other once, then finals is normal. Yeah, but that doesn't matter if you've already played two games. No, if you've already played two games, for example, the Canberra Raiders, they played the Gold Coast Titans yeah, and but, the New Zealand Warriors when no, the Warriors were in the Gold Coast. Yeah, but the thing is, then the, Roos then the Roosters or another team would get the opportunity to verse those teams down the track because they are easier games. Yeah, but they might, they might not get to. If, the, if you shorten the season and you no, don't so have you, enough rounds to play all these teams, you might not even get to play them. Gusman, but isn't the season being shortened to 15 games? Yeah, that, yeah I know, but there's a possibility that that could be shortened even further it could be could but be it's, down to that's not what's being 12. talked about though. it's such a it's such a fluid situation gus that i think sporting bodies around the world have to be adaptable and if they aren't then they're not going to survive um you know you've just got to take it with a grain of salt i think yeah no i know I, everything I, that's going on it's not a fair situation it's look, not i know i get it and, and what literally what i'm saying is i can see where nick politis is coming from here i don't agree with it because it's mm. not and it's not going to happen because the nrl have already said it's not happening but I can see why he might go, okay, now those two games, like the situation has completely changed. Those two games are now worth so much more. Of course, as if you're the boss of a team who went 0-2, you're going to go, oh, I don't, I don't want that to happen because, you know, we, got, well, we, we lost those two games. So now we've, we're probably likely to miss the finals of this reduced competition because you'd have to win eight or nine Just games in a, a row or something suck. like that to make it. Yeah, it's like, a suck because your team lost. It's no, no, I. No, I, what I'm saying is that it changes the whole the season completely. Change. It's a different competition. Yeah, yeah and for if, everyone. If, every, yeah, for everyone. Yeah, but yeah. some teams get a head start. Look, oh, guys, because they, cause they play, win the games. Yeah, exactly. I know, but considering that the, the, the season's changed, all right. Surely, what I don't agree with. Can I just? I don't agree with this. But he's yeah. thinking that they start off on a clean slate, so Look. that everyone's even when this after this change has happened. So that, because, you know... Every, I understand that, but everyone was even at the start of the season when we had the original start of the season, right? They wouldn't have been... Other, it was a normal competition when that started, right? Yeah, exactly. So they lost two games on an even competition, right? Yeah. yeah. So what's the difference this between that this, and the next this, this, six yeah. Yeah, I mean, whatever, the rest NRL's of the not an even competition anyway because the, the, how, the, the way that the draw is done is some teams play weaker sides twice. So it's, it's never going to okay, be Okay, so if it's a round-robin tournament and everyone plays each other once, yeah, that you play that, the that, same that works. teams the same amount of times. That works, but I mean, you will have sides that have played one team twice. Yeah, look, I think, I think we've just got to adapt. And CJ, what I was proposing to Gusman during the week as part of this debate was the fact that would Politis and would the Roosters be even suggesting this as a concept if they won their first two games? No, now, I no don't think way. So. Not I don't think a so. chance. Now, that's but, not, but I don't, I don't think he's digging. alone in saying it. I think other teams... He is alone. He is alone. Really? For the most uh, part, he's quite alone. Other teams might be thinking about it, but I'd obviously like the Warriors or something like that would be potentially thinking about it but you I'm know i'm pretty sure uh, the other sides are cons like 
like no, I'm pretty agree sure with him. I'm pretty sure they teams they? with two wins. The NRL, well, yeah, why wouldn't they agree with him? The NRL because, has because they've gone two and zero. The NRL, yeah. I'm pretty sure, have squashed it. Yeah, no, they have. That's um, they, I'm just I'm just saying this is what Nick Plytus is thinking, and <sighs> no one really agrees with it. But you can see where he's, he's coming from. I yeah. can see where he's coming from. And he wants to protect his business, and he—that's fair enough. But it is. But I, look, I, I just think he's having a sook because his team didn't win, and he sees it as an opportunity to go. We can have a restart. So every like, so it's fair for me, even though your team yeah. lost. Look, and it no, was no fair matter when what, they lost. No matter what happens, this season is already screwed. Yeah, it's already got an asterisk against it. It's not. It's not like any other NRL season, and people will look at. At the end of the season, if there is a winner, people will go, well, does it really count? Mm, is that yeah. a real premiership? Because this season was just a complete mess that, like, you know... It's, yeah. it's, it it's awkward, mate. It's awkward. But again, it's a sign of the times and rugby league is not alone in this either. Yeah. So yeah. again, it's just a matter of what we see going forward. Speaking of other codes, though, uh, AFL announced on Thursday afternoon that they are two weeks away from announcing... A return date. You figure yes. that one out. Now, okay. again, I think this is another marketing ploy from another code uh, going, hey, look, people are starting to go, we're not doing anything. Mm. Let's show them that we are, but are we really? Yeah. Is- no, yeah, this is definitely Gil McLaughlin going, shit, we need to say something. Exactly. Again, I think it's while the NRL don't have any idea of when they're actually coming back, I feel like it is statement. better. That is a big they, statement. They don't. They have no idea. Although, don't. I mean, they've set just May 28th, putting a date. They, so I, I guess that's the date. No, they're throwing a dart at a board and saying that date will mm. work. They have no idea when they're actually going to be able to come back. Optimistic? Yeah. You can say, oh, May 28th is when we'd like to come back. We're not mm. going to come back. So and they the, know that. Well, and the, the AFL they, know that. They, oh, actually, they can come back whenever they want. No, they can't. Really? No, they yeah, can't. Yeah, not, yeah not, they can. Not the, no, they can't. Yeah, they can. They cannot. They do not need government permission to restart the competition. The NRL stopped the competition. Social distancing. No, 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 the the government has said they can't. Mate, consider all the... Social distancing laws. Consider all the policies that are in place. Social distancing. Uh, You can't sweat. Like, if if we're running around for an hour, I'm going to start sweating. Mm. And then if that sweat then, I don't know, lands on you or whatever because you tackle me, that's the most unsocial distancing thing we can no. possibly imagine. Not okay, even yeah. to mention the travel restrictions that can have I, been put yeah. in place by Queensland. No, that's very true. That's, that's the only. That's the. That's the problem. But Brad Hazard, the health minister, came out and said that it's it, it's not a good idea to restart the NRL season. Mm. But the NRL stopped their season. Brad Hazard didn't stop their season. No, pretty no, much. They no. can prevent the them from starting it again. Yeah, yeah but they're, they're at the cons- time. <laughs> Just before they stopped the season, Brad Hazard said um, that he made a public order that allowed racing, rugby league, and other football codes to continue. Yeah, that he never said they had to the, stop. That doesn't mean that's the case now. The case yeah. has escalated extremely since then. So. But they haven't they haven't officially banned them because it's the, not the being NRL put in place. The NRL stopped because they got um, their their coronavirus expert that they employed mm. told them to stop. So they yeah. took their advice. They can restart tomorrow if they wanted. No, they, they can't. Won't. I'm telling no, they you, they're not going to start because it's terrible PR if you go, we're going to start our season again in the midst of a pan- global pandemic. We're the people's game. We'll I mean, do what yeah, we want to do. They're not going to do that. They're so what, I mean, that. but what they they've looked that. at is the fact that the, the cases, the percentage of cases has decreased. Because of over what this we're currently time. doing. That's yeah. not because the virus is getting less deadly or not getting... It's because we are separated. Yeah, I know, if, you, but if we go back to where, the way we were behaving like normal, then they're just going to go up until we find a cure. Look, it's, they, it's can, su- they can have a coronavirus expert, but who may give them the scientific, this is, you can play, you can't play, but it looks terrible for the brand if they start playing. It does look, it's irresponsible. Yeah, to start no, playing. I agree with that, but it's not against the law for them to. Yeah, but they're not going to do it. And they know that. I, look, I don't know. I don't think they will get the competition started on 28th, but um, May 28th. But that's what they've said. And look, we just got to see what happens. Honestly, Wait, yeah. Gusman, that's, 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 like, we just got to see what happens. Gusman, those few words you just muttered right there, I don't know. Uh, you're not the only one. 
Yeah. Uh, no one knows what's going to happen. And quite frankly, I think Campbell's I right know. in saying that the NRL as a governing body don't know what they're doing. Uh, they are hoping yeah. that they return on May 28th, but nobody, nobody knows when this coronavirus is going to cease. Yeah, uh, I think, I think it's a good move though. I think the AFL is going to set a date. They're going to do what the NRL's done because it looks it, it it's does PR. Look bad if you're it's quite... P- it's, 100% because you, you look at the A-League as Gusman again we spoke about this off here as well the A-League this season stopped and nothing has happened since we know nothing except there's been pay disputes and that type of thing but there is no talk about when it may return um, yeah. look ScoMo he spoke about it earlier in the week where he said international travel might not resume as we know it for another 18 months so how are the Warriors supposed to come over and what are they supposed to do? Well, are you is the NRL seriously expecting the Warriors to leave their families yep. for at best months. at best four months? Let's put yep. it like that. And again, that's speculation from my point of view. I'm nowhere near a health expert, but I'm saying four months best case scenario. Alternatively, the Warriors go, okay, sweet, we'll come over and play footy, but we want to bring our families. Cool. Mm-hmm. They do that. What happens if they're in Sydney and God forbid someone's parent, parent gets sick, mm. right? Yeah. And they want to be there with them or help them get through it or be with them at the end. That type of thing. Go to their funeral, whatever. This is worst case scenario. And they literally can't get back. You know, mm. the NRL wants this to be back so badly that I don't think they're seriously considering the health implications and the lifestyle implications that this decision could have. Yeah, it's, well, I... Th- I think that they, they've been tossing this up as well. They're considering just not playing with the Warriors. They're considering just doing the competition yeah. without the Warriors. That's a um, potential option. But, but they you still, do need to subsidize. You, if you go, you're not playing, then you have to probably, you yeah. probably have to subsidize the wage yeah. bills. Yeah, I know. See, but that's a dangerous game too, though, Gusman, because if you take the Warriors out of the picture and somehow rugby were to resume later in the year, you know, the NRL contingent, uh, sorry, the New Zealand fan base in rugby league who are already probably so passionate about the All Blacks and Rugby Union already, could just jump the ship completely, couldn't they? And they could just go, hey, sweet, you know, Auckland are playing counties this week. You know, I'll go watch that. It's a dangerous game when you start taking regions out of a competition, albeit due to these reasons. Teams and competitions have to be fluid. But just saying, hey, you guys can't be in it this year, but we're going to do it anyway. Mm. Bit of a dick move. It is, but at this stage they will do just about anything to get this competition going. So unfortunately, that might mean risking the Warriors and just not playing them. They, the Warriors just might not play and they might have to move sides from Brisbane, uh, sorry, sorry, from Queensland and Victoria into New South Wales. I mean, we, we talked about this last week. They're probably going to base the competition in New South Wales. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard they're going to play... State of Origin, if State of Origin goes ahead, they might play Bank that West. at Bankwest Stadium. They want to play three all games three at games West. at Bankwest. How's that? See, uh, actually, I guess fair isn't exactly that's, the word you can use not right now. a bad now. idea. No, but Origin's going to be played behind closed doors anyway. Yeah. It's the same with uh, the rugby championship in rugby. Uh, they're considering playing that in Australia in a six-week tournament. At least the beginning of that's going to be in front of no crowds. And how bizarre. CJ, you might not know this, mate, but the next test between the All Blacks and South Africa is the 100th match between those two teams. And this is, you know, New Zealand, like historically the best rugby team versus the world champions. Mm. No crowd? Whereas six months ago, we were saying 100th game is at Ellis Park or Eden Park. Mm -hmm. You know? I just want this to end. It sucks. It It sucks. And it's really not the type of thing I want to be saying on a sports podcast because, let's face it, that's going to make our lives a bit more difficult. But sports not going to resume... I can't imagine for at least six months. Yeah. Really? I, I just, so too. like, if there's no vaccine, how the hell can people be expected to run at each other, compete yeah. when social distancing and the likes are in place? I don't know. It's silly, but that's life at the moment. Let's see <laughs> what, is. let's see what happens. I'll watch it if it's on. Yeah. But no doubt. For the health of the players, let's hope it's not. Let's hope it's not, but let's hope it gets back soon. Let's hope safely. And we, or safely and responsibly, let's hope it gets mm. back soon. And again, a little bit of a PSA. Make sure you wash your hands. Make sure you distance. Only leave for essential reasons. And we hope everyone's safe. Um, as you can see, we're socially distancing here. We're in three different locations. So, um, I mean, it's allowed us to do video. But no, we hope everyone's safe. We hope the faithful are staying safe. Hope your families are safe. Hope everyone 
is all good. Um, thank you very much to Payne Hass for joining us this week. Um, if you haven't followed us on Instagram already, make sure you follow us at underscore beyond the sidelines underscore. Go check us out on Facebook uh, at beyond the sidelines. YouTube is at beyond the sidelines as well. Even go subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and uh, Spotify. Go give us a follow there. But boys, do we have anything more? Yeah, I just want to say just quickly, I think it's fair to say that Payne has been a great guest this week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Has yeah. been, oh, it really has, oh, has, no, he has been a good guest this week. Oh, yeah, time to, oh my time God, to sum up that, here, mate. time to wrap up, Campbell. Oh, no. Let's get I out of we'll, here, boys. I think we'll just leave that one to sit. <laughs> <laughs>